we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll we'll call, please. Seen him in years. Hang on. Uh, Mr. Nazarini? Here. Mr. Patel? Here. Mrs. Zalesnik? Here. Mr. Toro? Present. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mr. Stevenson? Mr. Kearney? Here. Mr. Kaczynski? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Thank you. At this time, if there's any public, anybody in the public audience that wants to step up and make a comment, please step up and write from your name and address. Thank you, Mr. Good evening, uh, distinguished board and uh, the central uh, superintendent. I asked the vice president if I could come and speak at the board meeting, and she said, why don't you, Mr. Wilson? And I said, I would. And it's, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> so Rhonda, you want to state your name and address for the record? Roderick Wilson. Bishop Roderick Wilson, 41 7th Street. Uh, Thank you. I just want to make a statement that are you a resident of the Chargers Valley School District? No, but I do work here. Okay. And I, was, I asked the president, the vice president, she said I could come speak. And um, I wanted to do that. Uh, it's it's against our bylaws to allow this. I apologize. It's just we're not public comment is for citizens of the district. It's all about it's all about students. I, I, I mean, I'm not trying to cause any problem, but right. But I think what I'm saying is we're, it's all geared towards the residents. That's why people have to come and give their name and address. It's not against you. If you ever want to speak to us, we'd be glad to to take your your comments or send it to us, but. Well, when can I when, 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 when can I do that? It was all benefiting the students, but but if that's what you want, that's, that's it's, no, it's no problem. No, I yeah. If you don't mind, hold your comments till the end. Sure. And we'll have you come back. Thank you very much. My name is Susan Allen. I live at 97 Dunford Drive. Um, I'm here on the behalf of the kitchen staff. We came and got letters in the mail stating that there was hours that were being cut. We were losing a cook's position. We want to know, and I want to know, why is this when we're the lowest paid in the district? that hours are being cut when you're building a brand new middle school and to the other schools, the primary and the IS, we have problems staffing everybody. It's hard to get people in here in the cafeteria to work three to four hours. And we're also, like I said, they're, they want to cut a cook's position. And I don't understand. I want you guys to justify it for me and everybody else the girls in the kitchen because they are here. Um, they're asking me questions. I have no answers. Um, like I said, you're building a brand new school where, to my opinion, because I've been working for the district for 21 years and I've been in the kitchen for 21 years, I've been running the middle school and the high school as a manager for the last 10 years. Now, I know you guys split the middle school and the high school now but you have a manager over there, but you're also going to need two more cooks over there because the way things are, we have a pizza shop, we have a grill, we have the main line. There's three cooks and we have a baker. And me, myself, I being so short staffed because we only have maybe two subs and one can only work a couple days a week. And it's hard because last year I was actually, which I shouldn't have done because according to our contract, but 
we were sending breakfast people to the other schools because we had to fill them. And we're always working short up at the high school and at the middle school and the other schools. These girls are coming to me wondering why their hours are being cut. I understand about the budget that I was told it's like, what, somebody said 80,000 they lost this past year, okay? And like I said, why are we, the girls, their hours are being cut? It doesn't, it just doesn't add up to me when you're actually building a new, brand new school and you need positions over there. And why are we terminating six hour positions and the cook's position? These girls, I already had one girl resign. I had two other girls quit. I mean, we can't afford that now, let alone just going by what we have. And there's also two people that quit at the other schools, the primary and the, at the IS, I was told. I mean, I mean, can you guys help me out here, how I can address the girls, or how you guys can address the girls about the situation and the budget? I mean, I understand. And these girls have really worked hard for years and always worked overtime. I mean, there was times where, you know, we could have just up and just left everything, but they did. They stayed, whether it was a half hour, whether it was an hour, they stayed until everything was done. And then after January, we get told that our, you know, you have to go home. You do your six hours and you leave. And it's not fair to everybody else because the four hour people, are doing the work. My six hours are really busting their butts to do dishes and stay and they've been getting like seven hours. They stay to do dishes, everybody stays. And then January comes and it's like, well, you guys are gonna have to cut back on your hours. When, if we do that, nothing will get done. The dishes will stay until the next day. And that's what I'm afraid that's gonna happen now because of the hours that are going to be cut. I have cooks that actually go in the dish room that do dishes. I have cooks at four hours. They, they really, these girls really bust their butts for this district. So let me, let me comment. I don't think there's anybody in this room who doesn't think that your staff and you don't work hard. I, 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 work, I recognize that and I think everybody else does. So. We commend you for your effort, no question about it. When it comes to budgeting, Nutrition Inc. is in a separate budget than our school district education budget. I understand that. Okay, and, and their budget uh, for the last two years has not come in balanced. And what happens is the difference between what is costing us to run the cafeteria and the negative balance in the budget comes out of the educational fund. And basically, we went back to Nutrition Inc. and said, listen, you have to balance your budget. There's, there's no way we want to continue to take money from our, our educational programs to, to fund your program. That program should stand on its own. And, and the recommendations they made were based on this long series of evaluations. It wasn't just about coming in and cutting people's hours. It was about what they evaluated, key times, key people, key hours, and, and, and came to that recommendation with Dr. White. And we as a board approved the recommendations to balance that budget. I, I don't know what else to tell you other than, you know, we, we hope that as you start this school year, that, you know, the changes that have been made, um, you can work within. We can certainly take a look at what's going on down there as, as time goes by. We're not saying it's not going to change or it can't be changed, but I think based on the budget and what was the decisions that were made and put in place, there's really not much we can do. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know, you know we, can, we can sit down and talk about it as time goes by, but that, that those changes were concrete and evaluated and nutrition you know, helped us to do that. So, uh, going forward again, you can look at it, but uh, you know, getting the school year, I think what it is, is we 
would have to work with them. I understand that, but I wish you guys would at least <coughs> actually every once in a while come in the kitchen, like the past year and the years before that. <coughs> I know Patty Corsi always came in the kitchen and checked everything out and seen how how everything was run because actually nutrition. I mean, we have a lot of a la carte stuff that these girls do every day. And it takes time. And like I said, when you're cutting the hours, we're not going to have that time to do all the a la carte stuff that, that brings the money in that the kids like. There's things that these kids like that they have every day, is what I'm trying to say. It, it's just the, the productivity is what's going to hurt in the long run. And these girls, I mean, they care about the students, of course, obviously. No question. But we, we, again, we recognize the fact that you guys all work hard and you're doing the best thing you can for the kids and providing a good meal for the students. Let's, let's, let, let's let it start. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And, and we will stop that. I mean, we will spend some time with you and see what's going okay. on. Another thing, I do have a cook that her position was cut. And she has benefits. What I'm afraid of is that if she doesn't stay as a cook, she's going to lose those benefits which she needs. Not that we all don't need health insurance, but it's the situation that's bothering me because they stepped her into a six-hour position without benefits. <clears throat> and once you guys, whoever, once they, that cook's position is gone, I'm afraid it's not going to come back. And she's going to lose her health insurance, which she really needs. You know, I'm, I'm like looking out for the girls here, not just me, but from, I say my girls, but they're not. <laughs> they are, but they're not. <laughs> just like I said, they're my students. That's my kitchen, because I guess I've been there for so many years, but... You guys can come in every once in a while and see and justify it, or once the middle school does get up and running for their kitchen. You know, but in the meantime, when am I supposed to tell the, the one girl that's losing her benefits? Take it into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Superintendent's report. I think Brian attends his report. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Last? Yeah. Okay. On to the solicitor's report. Just note for the record that we had an executive session this evening in advance of tonight's meeting where we discussed personnel and litigation matters. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> okay, I'd like to get uh, a motion to approve the minutes from our meeting. July 25th, 2017, and August 8th, 2017. Second. Moved by Mr. Kearney, second by Mr. Poore. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. On to the informational agenda. Uh, Education Foundation, any update on that, Scott? Nothing there. Mr. Kramer, Pathfinder. You know, I, um, I apologize, I missed Wednesday's meeting and I still haven't had a chance to catch up. I'll summarize the, the meeting next. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know Mrs. Patel is absent tonight, so part way it would be hers. Shasta, Mrs. Lennon. Nothing to report, nothing to share. Quiet, quiet summer for these guys. <laughs> I know the finance committee meeting has a report. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's where the magic happens. Yeah. <laughs> he gets all the answers. That's what my wife says too. <laughs> so we reviewed a monthly construction summary. Um, we reviewed our ICAM payments as well as a PJ Dick summary. We reviewed the billings from PSI and HF Lens. Uh, there was a total construction report that we reviewed. Everything appears in line. Um, there was no outliers or anything like that. Nothing unexpected, which is good news. Um, we also uh, performed a lengthy interview with a potential interim business manager that we're exploring, and uh, we will be in further discussions uh, with this person uh, going the next week or so to come in and perform an interim uh, business manager, manager 
due dates for you know, the next foreseeable future until we have one in place on a permanent basis. Thank you. Okay, on to the consent agenda. Anybody have any questions or comments regarding the consent agenda? come in that were faulty so we we decided to remove all the bids that came in and have them re resubmit. motion to approve items 6.1 through 6.11 excluding 6.8. Mr. Lesnick, second by Mr. Kearney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, our action discussion items. Um, so I had brought this up at our last board meeting that I wanted to talk about this with the board. Um, in discussions with our construction team, uh, which I've been pretty heavily involved in the last month and a half, getting ready to get these kids back to school and see how our progress is going and everything else, one of the, one of the points that they have brought up to me and, and they felt that it was something that they'd like to address with the board were um, these blower tests that have been being done by HF Labs. Um, and, and I've discussed this with PJ Dick and, and uh, you know, with you as the board. Um, and we feel that there is a very little value done, uh, being placed on the blower tests that are being done pre-finish of, of construction. The ones that are being done, you know, while the rooms are still no drywall, no, no caulking in the windows, uh, plastics being put up. Um, so I, I would just like to see if we could get um, HF Lens to agree to simply quit doing those tests during construction phase and, and come in and do the testing at, at the end of uh, our, our architect saying, hey, the room's complete, the, the space is complete, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's ready for testing. I believe that the $2,500 or so per test that we're, that we're spending plus the time we lose in the testing is, uh, would be money well saved and time well, well saved as well. So I, I would like to get you know, a motion to approve us to at least open up that HF Lens contract and, and take a look. Sheldon, could you <clears throat> add some additional commentary around what the implications are for remediating any issues that the testing could reveal? Yes. And then could you also talk about uh, a bit of you know, the dynamics of having the lens folks on site and what that means for kind of the, the tone during the construction? Absolutely. Thank you for asking me this question, Julie, because that is something we should talk about. So, so we, sorry, so we would still have them present and on site yes. and evaluating, you know, it, watching and overseeing the construction. Right. I think we all agree that there's a value. To there's it. yeah, I, I agree. And there's no lost time in that. Right. Um, he simply oversees what the contractors are doing. And in line with energy efficiency. Correct. And and, and you know. It, 
some of the stuff he does on his walk around mm -hmm. actually they pay attention to and they're maybe more uh, aware of doing a good job as a result of somebody looking over them. Uh, and, 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 and truly, based on our contract with our architects and our, our prime contractors, if there is a deficiency and the test is conducted and at the end it doesn't meet the requirements that have been placed upon them, then the rooms would have to, the correction would have to be made at their expense. So uh, I believe that there's really no risk here and it's all upside. Uh, so I, I just truly believe based on their recommendations that the blower testing is inaccurate, and that's putting it mildly, during the construction phase. And, and truly, the real number is, what do you get at the end? And then if, it's, if it's not what we expect, and if there are deficiencies in the construction, okay, they're responsible for correcting it. So. What's the, what's the estimated number of tests that do you think? Well, the way it's segmented, it's, it's segmented to uh, to be done in you know, various ways because they can't they can't isolate rooms small enough to be able to do it. So I, I, I anticipate there could be twenty to thirty more of these tests conducted prior to prior to construction. About twenty five hundred dollars on average. Correct. Yeah. So. Okay. So, I'd like to get a motion to approve us re-examining the HF lens contract and asking uh, to have the blower test while construction is being done. Uh, Exam. Okay. So moved. Thanks, Mr. Kramer. Second by Mr. Poor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. At this time, if there's anybody else that would like to make a lot of comment. Yes. Come on. I had no intention of making any public comment when I came here. I just wanted to meet you guys. My name is Bob Fryer. I live at the, uh, on Washington Avenue in Bridgeville. My family's been here near about 200 years. But uh, is the, I'm sure you're all totally frustrated with the 50 years of traffic congestion that's been present on the Washington Pike Corridor that's uh, parallel to I-79. This road is extremely important in many ways, uh, and the traffic congestion, in my opinion, has not been addressed sufficiently by PennDOT or the county. And as the uh, leaders of the most intellectual educational institution in the area. I think it would be good, <coughs> excuse me, if uh, you allow us to familiarize you with the problems uh, and the solutions, and if you would in some way uh, express your opinion of supporting some of the, the recommendations that uh, we're suggesting. Uh, call your township something that's directly related to you. Uh, I've been working with the uh, manager of Call Your Township for the past couple months. PennDOT has proposed an inadequate widening on Washington Pike between the uh, the Nadine Road intersection and the access roads to I-79. It would be totally useless. Uh, that four-lane road has been reduced to a two-lane road because there are 60 cars, as you, we all know, that sit in opposite directions in the center two lanes facing in opposite directions. Uh, our plans is to have the road made six lanes wide and keep the, 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 the existing uh, two center lanes as they should be functioning properly. But I don't want to get into the details. I had sent letters to uh, uh, Dr. White previously about this. More, uh, more than just letters, I sent him highly detailed uh, packets of information with drawings and uh, commentaries going back over 20 years. But anyway, I'd just like to suggest that you, there is, as a matter of fact, as a result of some of our efforts, uh, the former director at PennDOT, Dan Cessna, uh, suggested that a task force be created to solve some of these problems. It includes uh, Bridgeville, Safed, Collier, and Upper St. Clair. It might be good if uh, 
you have one of your representatives uh, attend those meetings. But I'll try to get more information to you uh, so you understand more clearly what right. I'm asking mess. you to do. <laughs> Pardon me? It's terrible. It's a mess. Yeah, and, and incidentally, that directly, that's suppressed the economic development along this corridor by 50%. We did a study just two years ago where 50% uh, of the people living in this market area, which is, includes your school district, have been detouring around the Bridgeville Cocker Southgate Business District for 35 years. The, the accessibility, the ease with which you can raise tax, taxes, which you have to do, uh, is, it's necessary if you have to do it, would be much more readily paid by the businesses and the people if we can do things to stimulate the, uh, the economy. I, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. President and the uh, school board for allowing me to have these few words. As most of y'all know, that uh, this calendar year will be my last, and uh, I've had a great run here, and I've had a great time of serving your kids, uh, and uh, enjoyed talking to a lot of them and giving them a lot of good advice to succeed in life, uh, but I wanted to come and uh, address you guys uh, in a formal uh, way uh, that will help benefit the kids. And uh, I always tell people, it's all about the kids. Uh, that being said, uh, there's a couple uh, groups that I'm trying to help uh, in the city of Pittsburgh, and one of them is the Pittsburgh Black Media Federation. And what they have every year, they have a, a, a journalism workshop in honor of uh, Frank Bowden, who was a legendary reporter here in uh, the Pittsburgh area. And I have information if the board would like to have it, I can pass it out to you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and that every, every summer around the end of July or beginning, uh, the middle of July, they have um, what they call a journalism workshop, which is very intensive, from broadcasting to podcast to you name it. Uh, some of them even do live broadcasting with KDKA. And I said, well, let me approach my school board at my district. And I said, I know our money is tight, but I will try to fundraise $1,500. I can do that if the school allow me to uh, use the facility down the auditorium sometime or another. Um, that maybe we could have four or five, four or five of our kids that don't, it doesn't matter what color they are. We always preach in diversity, and that's what it's all about. That, I don't know, maybe the school board, or maybe uh, the superintendent uh, will pick four or five kids up at the high school to participate free of charge, I'll, I'll raise the $1,500. Uh, I know sometime they have where they stay at Point Park University <coughs> for a week in the dorms, or sometime they have to go four, consecut four consecutive Saturdays. And at the end of it, they have a graduation at Point Park University. Uh, and they go over certain things where the parents can come and, and see what their kids have achieved. They get a certificate uh, and some other type of thing. Uh, and it would be a good thing for our students, in my opinion, to be involved in. Uh, and I would hope that the school board would go along with it. Because uh, it's a very good program. As you well know, we are always talking about uh, diversity as well as technology in CV. And I always want the best for our kids at CV. They all know I always tell them, be the best students in the world. And I want them to be the best students in the world. Literally. The other is, uh, now I'm sure the attorney will get a kick out of this, <laughs> the uh, Fairview Park in Murraysville. Uh, he might know where that is. Right there in Murraysville, Salem Township, something, I don't know. I'll try to get familiar with it, but I think he may know. It's the first and only African-American amusement slash park in Pennsylvania. 
and east of the Mississippi. And I thought, and hopefully the board would consider that, and the superintendent, uh, maybe sometime in May, you know, when the kids are thinking about getting out of school and all that kind of stuff, that, uh, well, the intermediate kids, because I'm very partial to the intermediate, <laughs> that uh, we can all load up, you know, there'll be refreshments out there and everything for them, you know, the kids and everything. I'll make sure that that'll happen. Free of charge, just provide the buses. I'll be grateful. The staff and everything, we go out there. I think it's a good history thing for our kids. They just, uh, this year, I went to it this past Saturday. Uh, they got their national uh, register of parks from the state of Pennsylvania. Now, we always preach in the first, I, I think it'll be a good thing. Now, the attorney may know, I, I think it's 52 acres out there, and it's very nice. And, they have other things that the kids can play with and so forth and so on. And I was hoping and praying that uh, maybe that can come to fruition. Uh, that's why I wanted to talk about tonight. Uh, that's why I wanted to come tonight to bring it to your attention. And hopefully the school board will be so kind to uh, consider it. Uh, because once again, it's all about the kids. Now, my tenure is coming to a close at CUA during the 2017-2018 year, thereabouts. I stayed, I was gonna retire on May 31st, but I stayed because there was a student at the intermediate that lost their father a few years ago, and they, I guess, took me in like a father figure, what have you, and they just couldn't see me to leave. And their mom came to me here when we had our Valentine's Day uh, celebration here at the school, and she said, Mr. Wilson, you can't do it. You can't do it because my daughter has problems. And she has, sometimes she has difficult days. And I walk around and talk to her and I bring her around and let her see the administrators. And it gets her back on task. That's what it's all about. Uh, I'm hoping that as I close my illustrious career here at CV and try to enjoy the sunshine in Florida, <laughs> <laughs> that... Uh, uh, you know, some, some of the staff members got me hooked on C.S. Keys when I really enjoyed it this past summer. <laughs> that I have a dear friend out in East Allegheny, he's a superintendent out there, Mr. McFan. Dear, we're personal friends. And he doesn't have a doctor that I know of. Maybe he does, I don't know, I don't think he does. But I'm hoping and praying that while CV is in their transition for a new superintendent or what have you, that you won't have to look too far, because I do believe that man sitting right there, Mr. Selson, is your man. He knows diversity tactics. His mom was the secretary of the NWCP in Newcastle. Great family, great uh, legendary status there, done great things for the community. And I think that man right there will be your man to lead CV in the near future. Now, if you're looking for a minority as far as assistant or what have you, I can help you. I can, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of folks. But I will tell you this. That man right there, I know school boards always look for the doctors and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. He may have a doctor. I don't know. But I will tell you right now, that man's soul is right for CV. And you have a jewel right there. And you really don't have to look any further to tell you the truth. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to have this space, and uh, I enjoyed seeing a lot of you guys as school board members slash parents, and I enjoyed your kids, I enjoyed the kids, and I enjoyed all the staff at Charches Valley, and Charches Valley, in my opinion, I've said this on the radio, I've said it on TV, as far as I was concerned, CV is one of the best schools in the country, and wherever I go, wherever I talk, most of y'all don't even know my status outside of here, which is a very, I think, pretty significant. CV is always at the forefront, as far as I'm concerned, in education. You guys have done a good job, as far as the, 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 the students and uh, the buildings. Uh, the building that you're building is, uh, and I tell all the time, I, I people all the time, 
you look on that internet, that, that, that school building up there, what they're building, it'll make you proud. I know it's expensive, but it's like a college campus. And it'll make any parent that has a kid in CV proud to be in CV. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. President. Um, again, I'm, I'm here. Do you know how many rumors are out there? There are so many rumors out there. Did you know that the bridge fell down last week? Uh, it's, this it's, is the rumor mill. It is the rumor mill. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I'm here to ask about another rumor um, as far as where we're at with staffing at the primary school um, with those extra students and classes. The rumor out there right now is that um, the Spanish teachers are going to fill those two positions. And so I'm here to get an answer to the rumor, basically, if there's one to be had. So in our executive session, we talked about personnel salary, mm -hmm. and that is uh, a decision mm -hmm. in order to move those Spanish teachers to kindergarten positions in library mm -hmm. positions. Kindergarten numbers. So, are there more than 16 kindergartens? No. No, there's 16? Yes. No. 15. 15. Okay. And there's, we're not adding to the uh, second grade? No. Okay. I, I'm just asking because I, I, try to, I try to dispel rumors where possible. <laughs> so, I was just asking that we'd be really sensitive to this information yeah, because yeah, I'm not, yeah. people don't yeah. know yet. Well, and that was my other thing. Do these folks know yet? Um, so I just want to be really sensitive to that. Yeah. Jolie and Anissa will take care of that. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, We're going to communicate. That's, that's fine. And the other, I guess the other piece of that now will be that if we don't have Spanish in the primary school, we'll need to revamp the curriculum to reflect that. For the we hope that the collaboration yeah, we'll collaborate. Will it be a big part oh, of yeah. That? No, I, I just, like I said, there was rumors out there, and uh, I know I'll get a straight answer, and I don't want, I want to stop the rumors. That's my, my whole thing. Uh, huh? Never stop. Well, I can try. But, um, yeah, that's, that, those are, that's the big piece of that. And um, can you address for all of us, I guess, we were told by Jason that we would be able to be in the building on the 18th, but that's not happening. In the last meeting, Jason said that we could, they were going to be able to turn the building over on the 18th to the district, and that didn't happen, because we've been told through emails from principals. Well, I, I think there's a little bit of confusion on the turnover of the building. Okay. Um, that's why I'm asking for yeah, clarification. We started, to, we started to move stuff into the building. Okay. So, um, Actually, you know, I think there might be a little confusion on what I mean, actually, that it's ours and we're good to go. I don't, I don't think that was ever the intent. Um, that we were able to actually get in, we're actually moving equipment into the school. Okay. Uh, so they're, they've done a great job. Our uh, custodian and our oh, yeah. moving help was just a wonderful job. Um, moving and getting things organized and cleaning while they're moving. Um, they, they're doing a great job. So um, as far as punch list and all that turned over, I think that it was more that we could start moving in. Okay. And actually we, we got in there before that. Okay. That's just because that, again, that's another one of those rumors that's out there. Right. And I just right. thought I would ask about that. Um, because I know at the middle school they're planning open house from the 7th to September, so that's a pretty fast turnaround for everyone well, to get the well, box well, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know. And, the <laughs> is we will start school on time. Okay. So then that September 7th will be awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. Michelle Sedlak, 15. Nobody signed in. Like, like literally four people. I know. Like 100 people signed. So I'm not signing in either. I'm going to be a renegade. 
Uh, Michelle said, like, 1595 Sporting Oak Drive, and I wasn't going to speak again either, but my gosh, like, once again, this is the conversation that we're having again and again and again. I'm hearing that there's not enough money for uh, uh, the, the science teachers to order supplies. Uh, we can't add another autistic support classroom because we don't have the money. We can't hire staff because we don't have the money. And now we're taking Spanish teachers and turning them into kindergarten teachers. And now we're cutting food service where they're going to leave dirty dishes. And by God, I hope they do. I hope they walk out when their shift is done and that kitchen's a disaster and we end up with a rat problem in our brand new, nice, beautiful school. Now, I've said this at February meetings, March meetings, April meetings. It's enough. We're now cash poor. We got a beautiful house and we can't put furniture in. And I'm looking at all of you. And I don't know what you do with the information that people come up here and present. I don't know if you are required to take that back in your meeting and discuss what is said. What is said about bullying? What is said about diversity? And yeah, this school district could use a little help with all of it. I've been very quiet about stuff like that. I've been trying to be helpful and everything else. And now I've sat here long enough that I'm angry. So do with the information what you like. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Anyone else? <coughs> Okay. I would like to get a motion to adjourn. May I say something? Certainly. Thank you. A couple minutes. Um, on a personal note, but I don't wait. I was fortunate enough to be here when he came aboard. Uh, let me tell you, he walked into a mess. I don't mind doing it because I never voted for the past administration. But, um, he walked into a mess. And I don't know of another individual who would have pulled off the weekend. His outstanding service, he has to be commended on that. And he, just everything the man did, he took this school apart, put it back together again, piece by piece. He brought in fantastic staff. Uh, he engaged the public, the employees. He put hours and hours and hours into this school. I've gone through seven superintendents, so I, I think I have a little knowledge. And I've gone through four at the IU, so I just wanted to thank Dr. White for his incredible service. What he did to our school district, he made it very, very respectable again. When, when I was on the IU and I would be out in the county, uh, everything was great about Churchill Valley, how we were upcoming, upcoming, upcoming. And he never, ever stopped that vision. He always had that progressive vision to make us better and better and better. And he will be truly missed. And not only are we losing the superintendent, we're losing a good friend. And he will be truly missed. And I just want to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We all feel the same way. I know. I, 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 I meant it too. So, we're at the whole board. Anybody else have anything? Right. We get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Board, seconded by Mr. Kearney. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, folks. Good meeting.